Hi guys and welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be visiting the town of Chorley to make some Chorley cakes. Please subscribe and please share and don't forget guys your recipe is below the video in the description and also you can find it on my Facebook page at the traditional bakery under the photo. And we'll get right on with the video. This is the story of the Chorley cake and how it was originated. <laughs> the interesting thing, guys, is it's such a close cousin to the Eccles cake, it's unbelievable. And the funny thing is, Eccles had the Eccles cake and Chorley wants some of their own, but they're very good at short things. So they decided, let's make it our local delicacy, our own short pastry. So this is what they did. They took the short pastry, they got their dried fruit, chopped it in, added a few bits of other ingredients and have a go. Worked out to be a fantastic little job they did because it certainly turned into a really tea time treat for the old days. And now we'll get on to making our chorley cakes. And for the recipe, you want 21 grams of caster sugar, two grams of baking powder, 256 grams of all purpose flour, and 170 grams of butter and 42 grams of milk. For the filling, you want 128 grams of currants, 42 grams of light brown sugar and 56 grams of melted butter. You want a four inch cutter and a two and a half inch cutter. First things guys, we pop our butter into the microwave to warm. Now we add that into the currants and give that a good stir around. Now we're going to add in the light brown sugar and give that a good stir around. This is for the filling. Always do the filling first. It gives it time to set. That's right. Give it a good mix round and that's it. Now set that aside. Right, we've got our flour. We add in our baking powder, our caster sugar. Give that a good stir around. Now we're gonna break in the butter. Always best to use softened butter, guys. Well, and what we're gonna do now is mix this in. So we're gonna make a very nice, fine crumb. Finer the better. See, use your thumbs. Get it stirred in and you'll get that nice crummy effect. And now we've got it all up together, nice and crumbed. What we're gonna do now, guys, is add in our milk. Now you're gonna bring this all up together and now we're gonna make this into a pastry dough. Okay, guys, you don't need to beat the death out of this pastry it's pastry not a bread dough so don't get kneading it up to nothing because you can over mix it as well because the idea is to make this as short as possible see a good mix round and now what we're going to do is roll it into a ball that's it mix it all in Right, and now we're gonna roll it up. And that's it. And now we're gonna cover this with cling film and put it into the fridge for around about 20 minutes. This gives the time for the pastry dough to relax. Right, and after 20 minutes, right, now we've got the pastry out of the fridge. What we're gonna do is unwrap it and pop it onto the table. Now we're gonna give the table a good dusting with flour, roll it out a little bit. And now what we're gonna do is break this into 10 individual pieces. Now the way I do it, I do it with a set of wheels and divide, divide it into five and then cut down each one of those 
and then cut them again to make 10 individual pieces. And all we're going to do with these guys is mold them around. So you've got 10 individual pieces. Now, another way of doing this, you can just roll it out on the table and just cut out 10 pieces if you like with the four inch cutter. But I find this a little bit easier. So you got the exact amount of dough per chorley. That's it. The neater you can make the balls, the better. Right, and it doesn't take much education what we're gonna be doing next. We're gonna be rolling them out. Now we're gonna be rolling them out to four inches. That's my four inch cutter. And they wanna be exactly four inches. So we roll them out. And then best idea then is just to make it the size of the cutter. That's it like that. And that's all we do. And there we go guys. Now with the filling, you spread the filling out across all 10 so it's all nice and even and that's it just make sure you've got the right amount on each one do you want to short change anybody Right, now what we're going to do guys, we're going to fold them up. So you fold all four corners up and then sort of squeeze it in the middle. Fold up all four corners, then grab all the other bits and just fold it up and squeeze. So you, you've got a look a little bit of a tail. And you do this all the ten. Here we go. You can see how short the pastry is. What's nice about this type of pastry, it's more like a shortbread. It's not it's not normal pastry, it's just so short, it's just like shortbread. With a beautiful buttery taste. Now what we do is get our two and a half inch cutter and we place them inside and just push them down because you only want them two and a half inches round. And this recipe we've been using is from 1947. So this recipe is going back some years. So you pop the piece into the cutter and just push it out to the sides. And it keeps them nice and even. Right now, just put three little lines on the top. And when you've done this, you want to rest them for around about 20 minutes before baking. We're going to try them up now. And we're going to cover them with milk. You can use a egg wash if you like, but I just think that egg wash just gives it a little bit too much of a 
glossy colour and the mouth's just right. And that's it guys. And next to it is the Eccles Cakes, as you can see. Right, we're now going to bake them. The oven temperature wants to be 375 Fahrenheit. And we're going to be baking them in the oven for around 20 minutes. And there we go, guys. Mmm, scrummy. And here comes the Eccles Cakes. So you've got your Chorley Cakes and you've got your Eccles Cakes. So you can see the difference between the two. It's as simple as that, guys. They are absolutely scrummy. I've made them several times, but I would suggest making them a little bit lighter than I did. Preferably, I think they should be a little bit lighter. But in saying that, there's no rules on it. The important part is the pastry. Once you get that pastry right, it's absolutely lush. With the butter in it, it just melts in your mouth. Every time I go to Lancashire, I always go to Chorley and I always buy Chorley cakes. Don't forget guys, your recipe is below the video in the description. And please subscribe and please share. Anyway, we'll see you again very shortly. Laters!